Hey, Roger, here's what I'm thinking. All right, so I don't have any light on this right now. Whew. If I look at it through your eyes, here's what I see. Okay, when you look at it straight on, you can see to the left how it's kind of sunken in. See that right here? And then this over here. Okay, if somebody was to take a club and bash this on the side and cause it to sink in and then took a club and bashed it in the back of the head. See how the back of the head is kind of sunk in? Oh, it's so hard to look at. Okay, so the back of the head isn't even with the other side. Okay? It's not. Like a... Like something hit it very hard and they could have, it has punctures in it, so I'm thinking it could have been a club with things sticking out of it. I'm not sure. Okay? So it could have been hit from behind very hard, and then it was definitely hit and smashed in right in here. This would cause the difference in comparison to the other side because the other side has got nothing like that on there. Okay, now to the headpiece. It reminds me of what a cobra would have. These are alive. It is a part of her. It's not her hair. You can't dent hair, right? And it's like a, a, a cover sack on the back of their head almost like what a snake would have a cobra I'm not sure but I'm almost positive that this is female okay so that's what I wanted to show you as you can see I messed everything up here as you can see um, this side is kind of smashed in and this side is not okay and in the back it's the same exact thing this side is not smashed in this side over here all of this goes in all right peace out
Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, with one of the hugest moments in Mud Fossil University history, and this is the reason. Kim Montgomery has this head out in Washington State, and it's in the woods. She keeps it in the woods, and it just sits there, and it was always assumed to be more or less a carved head of some sort, and then she saw something that I posted and it sort of tripped a little thought process and uh, got a hold of me and uh, this is how the things unfolded. But let me show you what, what she saw uh, which which triggered a, a response in her to say well let me show this guy and let him see what he thinks and sure enough <laughs> you'll see what happened. Alright this is what she saw. I, I did a post about this head and I, I really don't recall what the post was about to be honest with you. But this was discovered by Arlie Caudill and Jim Burchill down in Kentucky. Oh, It's been in that area for many 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 years. And they apparently came out of a mud embankment and, uh, and ever since it's been thought it was just a carved head. And it was shown on TV. Scott Walter showed it and he said oh this is just a sandstone head. It's not not anything that's ever been alive. Uh, and, and I took exception to that and then things got sort of bitter in that area and it's never been checked. Now this is a cracked skull. We did have this thing autopsy, uh, uh, CAT scan and it's it's got a cracked skull and it has a knife blade coming in from the top. This is some form of a hat. You can slip a card right up in between the cap and his head. This is the red and the black ferrous oxides that come out from the blood when you have injuries. This is the bone black. It's absolutely 100% authentic. And so I've been fighting ever since. Well, I've been fighting forever, but this I thought was going to get us noticed. And it was called not real. So it, since that happens, you go, you continue to fight. So. Everything's been proven now. There's no questions. DNA tests and CAT scans and all that business. So, so all the people that said it, it's not correct, we're all wrong. So now let's get to do the real testing. So let me show you what Kim has, and then we'll go from there. But this has to be rectified, and it's being fought against by every every sector. It's amazing. Academia has it absolutely against this, and everybody else that has been saying this and that is, is against it because it changes what they've been saying. So as soon as somebody is, is called wrong, they just walk away instead of looking at the evidence. So this time we're going to look at the evidence. Okay, this is Kim Montgomery, and this is the head that she has, and she's going to explain uh, what she sees in this, and I agree with her 100%. So, as we go through this, um, she, she'll just explain to you what has happened to this head, and this was a, a, a living creature at one time. Any light on this right now? Whew. If I look at it through your eyes, here's what I see. Her okay. eyes are working fine, by When you the way. look at it straight on, you can see to the left how it's kind of sunken in. See that? Right here. And then this over here. Okay, if somebody was to take a club and bash this on the side and cause it to sink in, and then took a club and bashed it in the back of the head. See how the back of the head is kind of sunk in? Oh, it's so hard to look at. You see the radiated crack? Okay, so the back of the head Boom. isn't even with the other side, okay? It's not. Like a like something hit it very hard and they could have it has punctures in it so I'm thinking it could have been a club with things sticking out of it I'm not sure and I, I believe she's correct in all of her assessments the, the thing was cracked in the side of the head 
and obviously the back of the head was cracked and fractured. Um, these, this bony looking material is literally bone, it appears, and the, the skin has been either eroded away or it never really had much skin on there. But it is, it's a very, a very thin layer possibly of skin, but primarily you see in bone here. That's my estimation. I'll show you why I say that with some okay. microscope shots. So it could have been hit from behind very hard, and then it was definitely hit and smashed in, in right in here. This would cause the difference in comparison to the other side, because the other side has got nothing like that on there. Okay, now to the headpiece. It reminds me of what a cobra would have. These are alive. It is a part of her. It's not her hair. You can't dent hair, right? And it's like a, a, a cover sack on the back of their head, almost like what a snake would have, a cobra. I'm not sure, but I'm almost positive that this is female, okay? So that's what I wanted to show you. As you can see, I messed everything up here. As you can see, um, this side is kind of smashed in, and this side is not. Okay? And in the back, it's the same exact thing. This side is not smashed in. This side over here, all of this. All right, she's basically done now. Here and and I, what I want to point out is this is absolute. There's no question what 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 the story is here. This is smashed in. It radiates a fracture out. This is the red oxidized blood. This is a red blooded creature. The blood is is leaking out through these fractures. There is no no guesses here. Now the the material that we see on here, this bony material, I'm going to show you what I have here that's bony material. We'll put it under a microscope and I'll show you what you actually see here. And people think the oh this is just concrete or something. Absolutely not. And 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 I will show you why I can make that absolute statement. Ah, right, you see the material in that Kim's um, head there. Now this is a, a bone that I have here and it is enormous bone. And this is, uh, that's the rounded edge part of it. It's all fractured out, obviously. But this is, is also a bone. But this, in its in entirety, is, uh, is, is an enormous, enormous bone. Because you can see that is just the actual radius of the curve. So you drag that out, and you are going to a huge bone. And this is a bone, and I will show it in the microscope. I was told oh, that's just concrete. It is not concrete, absolutely not concrete. And I will prove to you that that is not concrete right now. Okay, as we know, that's the back of the head that Kim has. This is the bone that I have here that I will be uh, showing you in the video. And this is the curve of the outside of the bone. Of course, it's all fractured up now. And um, the, it was approximately 60 inches in circumference. Now, I'm going to show you the porosity and how these things look. People say, oh, that's just concrete. It's absolutely not concrete. It is a bone. Now, this is the... Um, the microscope shots here. We're going to be going up to the microscope, and uh, this is uh, some other stuff that some mud fossils. There's all, I got all kinds of pictures in here just to give you an idea. These are the kind of things that are in mud fossils. You see these? This, this. That's the, that's the fiber fibers that are in the the grip skin area of your 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 tough areas. This is uh, that's blood and, and uh, so forth. Same thing there. And there's metals in here. You see all the metals that come in with the blood where in uh, certain areas here. But but this is all this is all organic tissues. This is not something that I, I I'm unfamiliar with. Trust me. And this is that's bone foramen, and that's the blood leaking out and all that stuff. They're, 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 there's no question what I'm saying is here. Now, I'm going to show you, that this is the, these are just pictures that I took on a bunch of different mud fossils, hundreds of them, literally. 
um, thousands probably. But anyway, there. Um, let's go into um, this one that's right in front of me here, and I will show you. You saw it. It looks like concrete. Well, it's not concrete. You see this? There it is right here. That's what bones look like. The, the holes in there actually feed the bone. You see all the little flecky looking stuff all over? That's all the, the, the matrix of the bone. And these holes, you can actually see where the, the blood enters the hole. You see? These, these are they're holes where the blood enters into the bone. And, uh, and that's what it is, it's bone. You see all these little tiny holes? That's, and the black, the black is the, the uh, dark used up blood, it's the FeO3 blood. And then redder spots are going to be where the... Uh, FeO3 is the, the, the red blood. And uh, here's a big huge bone for them. And right here, you see how they have, they, they make these holes and then the blood fills inside and they just, they're, they're soaked in, in a blood solution really is what it boils down to. This has nothing to do with concrete, trust me. And, and of course I showed this to a geologist, oh that's nothing and they just walk away. Well it's not just nothing, this is, is, a, is a bone. So that's what we got. You see here? You go way down inside that bone, something's going on down there. I don't know. I don't know. You know, there's so much to look at here, and, and it's just being avoided, and it's very distressing. Anyway, that's what the bones look like, and that's what um, Tim has is a, is a bone. Oh, oh, by the way, while I'm here, fabulous. This I, is, is the, what happens in lungs. You see, this is lung tissue. I just fell onto this, and I figure I might as well tell you about this right now, because this is something they don't understand either. You see all these different colors in that? that this, this is the lung. Here's the lung right here. It's cut off, and this is the same lung. You see? That's a little bitty lung from, uh, I don't know what it's from, some creature. But anyway, that is what happens inside the lungs. And this is transition metal bonding. What that means is this is different than that, and that is different than this, and this is different than that, and that is different than this. And, whoops. All of them are different. And they apparently, inside your lungs, in my lungs, the different little cells of the lungs have different chemistry, and they take on different molecules in those in those places and I cannot account for that it's not a con it's not like a, 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 a consistent you know red bloody that's all there is no there is different chemistry in the different cells of the different areas in the lung and that is the tissue variegation that that that, uh, that, that, that indicates that there are differences in the tissues the only way you get these different colors is there's different tissues that's all there is to it so something needs to be looked at here in the lungs as well as, as the rest of the chemistry of the body. There's a lot is being missed because they're not paying attention to, the, to, to mud fossils. And that, it's time to, to change that. Okay, now let's finish up with this. I'm, I'm just going to put a little plug in from Mud Fossil University on YouTube. Go up there and make sure you tell everyone that you know to go up there and start to learn about our true reality. Now, these are... Um, you know, people send these from all over the world. They're sending in pictures of things that look like this reptilian head or birdman head or whatever it is. But what I'm getting at is start looking around. This comes from, from Sumeria, 4000 BC. That's like 6,000 years ago. And that, <laughs> that's a long time ago. And I think this was antediluvian before this started, uh, before this new uh, humanoid existence started on earth there's a lot to learn here and it's got to be looked at i mean that's all there is to it why avoid this that's my point why avoid it why fight it let's look at it and, and investigate it. if it's not right well it's not right if it's right it is right but my point on looking at this thing here is this has got some kind of a lump on its head too i just don't know what to think anymore i really honestly don't um and it should be investigated Okay, finishing up about investigating things. I'm mean, obviously this is Kim's head again. Um, I just want to make a couple last statements. 
there is a ton of stuff to be investigated. It is no longer speculation. DNA tests have been done. Everything has been, been validated and certified by certified labs. Now, there's another, another um, review going on in South Africa now by Michael Tellinger, who has some mud fossils there that, he, you know, I'm I have totally separate from him. I have nothing to do with any of his research whatsoever other than to assist him in, in giving him my research to verify that my mud fossils are what I claim they are, and he is going to see if he can um, recreate that same evidence in South Africa. And he also has a new species that we discovered called no-toes. And they're, they're feet that have no visible toes. They're in, totally encased. Uh, and I here have found the first ones, the Preston no-toe is in Connecticut. It was found in uh, 2012, somewhere around there. And now they're being found all over the world. And I've, hundreds of them are coming in. I mean, literally dozens of them daily or I'm getting reports of these things. They're all, they're everywhere. So that is also on Mud Fossil University. We need to investigate our ancient past and our true history. And as a, and I'm starting to get, finally, after six years, people are starting to pay attention. And I have a priest coming here uh, tomorrow, actually. Today is the... Uh, 25th of January 2018 and I have a priest coming here tomorrow who is a scholarly Old Testament um, scholar and he is saw this and he contacted me I didn't contact him so he is interested and he wanted to get here right away and find out about this and he'll be here tomorrow and we're gonna have hopefully a very very interesting discussion I can tell you it's going to be interesting for him. <laughs> and it would be very interesting for me to see what his responses are. Because I am very, very well schooled at all of the ancient texts. I've read virtually all of them. And, uh, and it goes back to my way of thinking. Gaia, Titans, Olympians, all facts. All facts. Gorgons, facts. It's time to investigate these things as a possibility. I say they're facts. You can say anything you want. But when I say they're facts, I present evidence. And when you say they're not facts, you better be able to present evidence to show that my evidence is incorrect. That's, all it has. that's, that's the bottom line of being a scientist. And there are no scientists that I can find. I mean, there are maybe one here and there, but they're not finding me. I can tell you that. So, <laughs> all I can say is this stuff is not a joke. It's not something that doesn't mean anything. It's not a monkey bone. It's not some curiosity for a, a, a carnival or a side show. This is what we come from. Some Something here is, is, is from us. It's from our, our lives, our history, our past. How can this be just so casually dismissed? It boggles my mind. Get up to Mud Fossil University. Take this into your own hands. Don't let these people tell you what to think. Take this in your own hands. Because I'm going to tell you right now, this is not just for today. This is for your life, and this is for eternity. And if you don't understand what this is about, eternity is in question for you, I would think. You're going to have to dig and look and, 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 you know, I mean, as I'm just telling you, if you call me a religious fanatic, call me anything you want. I'm not that religious, to be perfectly honest with you. I am a historian. I'm a scientist. I'm a chemist. I understand rocks. But they lead me to understanding what our history was. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to read a bunch of books and know our history. No. It doesn't work. You're going to have to be able to prove it. Somehow with chemistry, somehow with molecules, and that I have done. And now it's time to look at it as a, as a serious investigation of our past.